Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going over to the West a little bit, and we're going to be talking to young Grant Thompson out of Mobile, Alabama, better known as the Mobile Missile. Grant, what's up tonight? What's going on, Rod? <laughs> Not too much, man. Life is good. I get to spend the afternoon or the evening with the legendary Grant Thompson. Doesn't get much better than that. We've been having fun. Uh, been working on some junior light models and just really getting in for preparation for 2021. So, you know, Grant, when you look back on the year, 2020 has been an amazing year. You know, I think most kids that are your age, and share with the viewers how old you are. I'm 14. He's 14 years old. I want the viewers to think about something. What were you doing when you were 14 years old? I know what I was doing. I was playing basketball, but I wasn't driving race cars. And I wasn't <laughs> performing at the level that, that you're performing at. I mean, that's pretty amazing. We, we've had a lot of really good opportunities throughout the years. And, you know, to be 14 and racing, probably a lot of drill and pro trucks for curb it's really just a blessing from God. You know, we've, we've had a really good year and, we're just super excited to be able to have the opportunities that we've had over 2020. Well, let's rewind a little bit and let's talk about how your year kind of unfolded. So everybody knows that you are looking at the first and there will only be one first junior late model challenge camp champion. And that was Grant Thompson. So you won that uh, again, that was last year. That was 2019, but you were all prepared to go out to Madera, California, and running the 5150 Junior Late Model Series until COVID hit. You know, that put a damper on your plan. So, how have you kind of dealt with that? And I know you were disappointed, but we'll get into to, to how the rest of the year. But just kind of tell us your feelings about that. You know, you know, after the camp, we were we were really excited to go back out there and run in Madeira with Matt Clark Motorsports. Super, really good team. Really great group of group of guys just we were really excited to go back out there and we went earlier in the year probably around january february and we uh we tested some with them and you know we had a really good race car i felt like we were going to have a pretty good shot at you know maybe getting a couple wins maybe even a championship we, we really didn't know but you know we were ready to go out there and, and give it everything we had and then coronavirus hit us and it just it really kind of devastated me because i I was really looking forward to going out there, but, you know, we were able to, to kind of like regroup and be able to still have a good relationship with Nate Clark Motorsports and, you know, going into the, to the Turkey Bowl and Tucson Speedway, super, super excited about that with them, but, you know, a little bit devastated we were, we weren't able to go out there, but we were, we were able to get a couple, a couple opportunities down here um, on the East Coast. Yeah, so... You know, when that kind of got put on hold, then again, as you said, you, you got hooked up with Kurt Ritt Motorsports and you got into that pro truck and you've done some pro truck racing in the past. So it wasn't anything new, but, but you went out there and you basically dominated in this pro truck. You won two championships. You won a championship at Chris Motorsports Park and you won a championship at Five Flag Speedway. And I know Five Flag Speedway is very dear to your heart. So Kind of walk us through that year. You know, in, in 2019, you know, we were running our own trucks, and we were running up against Kurt in, in Pensacola, and Josh Hicks, he was driving the Kurt's trucks, and we kept finishing second to them every night. And, you know, I was just, we got to come up, we got to come up with a way to beat them. And in 2020, after the 2019, 2019 season ended, Kurt, Kurt picked us up, and he said, you know what, I, I really want Grant Thompson to drive my truck. And I was super excited about that. You know, and to be able to run another year in Pensacola and in Chris Motorsports Park in Fort Hill, Georgia, we were able to pick up two championships. I was super blessed to be able to, to be picked up by Kurt, and I just want to thank you, Kurt, for everything that he's done. But, you know, we had a had a really good season, had seven or eight or so wins, had a, had a bunch of top five finishes. We were just really able – we were super excited to be able to be picked up by Kurt. And, uh, you know, serendipity, thank you so much to them. For what a great season. Well, the actual numbers are eight wins, two seconds. You never finished a race outside of the top three 
at those two particular tracks. Now, outside of the top three, that's crazy. It, it was crazy. You know, I know Kurt, he has some of the best trucks on the East Coast, and to be able to drive for him was just absolutely incredible. I, Kurt, Kurt's a really good guy. He has really good trucks, and we were just super excited to be able to run with him. Had a whole lot of success. So in the midst of all of this, you got the chance to drive for your, I'm going to just going to call it your childhood idol, who was Augie Grill, in maybe one of the most famous late models. Everybody knows the 112 late model. And you had the opportunity to get behind the wheel of that. When you first heard that, what was your emotions? What was going through your head when you realized that, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to get to do this? It it was crazy. I was in shock. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, as as a kid, when my dad used to race late models, I was all, always watching Augie, and Augie won so many races over, over his career. And, you know, to be able to know that I was going to be driving his car in 2020, that was just, it, it just shocked me. I just... I didn't know what to say. It was absolutely incredible. But Augie, really great guy, really good race car, and we, we had a whole lot of success with him. And just, you know, just to be able to have that feeling to race for him, that, that was absolutely incredible. So at first, did you think about it, oh, my gosh, this is really exciting, and then you're just like, oh, my gosh, these are big shoes to fill. You know, <laughs> everybody's used to that 112 running up front. Did that go through your head? You know, knowing that we were racing the 112, you know, you hear 112, you automatically think Augie Grew. And, you know, just to be able to run in his shoes, that was crazy. You know, just getting my feet wet, and then all of a sudden, you get up with the big boys like Chris Davidson and Bubba Pollard and racing with them. It's just absolutely incredible. <laughs> well, it's not only did you race with them, but you did pretty dadgum good. You had three top fives, seven top tens, and seven starts. You never finished outside of the top ten. We we had a really good car over the year, and, you know, we ran up in Fort Hill, Georgia once. Um, matter of fact, we qualified second in that race, ended up finishing fourth. Um, ended up running the Allen Trader Pro Late Mile Series in Pensacola. Uh, had a really good fit um, – had a really good uh, – group of guys helping us out there and you know had a really good really good finish there over the past couple races and then you know just to just to you know recap the season you know just to think about that that was absolutely incredible so you finished second in the points championship only four points out of first so I gotta ask this question over the last 30 days has it kind of gone through your head Looking back at those seven starts, have you kind of replayed to say, here's some areas where I might have been able to pick up a couple of points? You know, I, I thought about that. And, you know, looking back at the points, being four points out of the championship, you know, there it was those times where, you know, the mistakes were made that I could have been better. And, you know, in the championship race, I ended up finishing seventh. If I wouldn't have finished fifth, we would have got the championship. And, you know, that really just made me think that every spot and every race matters. You know, it was crazy. I, I think that, you know, truthfully, Grant, I think that what a lesson learned. I think moving forward in your career, that just what you said, every race, every position counts. And you're not the only racer that this has happened to this year. I mean, there's, there's guys at the cup level that could look back and go, oh, my gosh, I missed this by – only a couple of points, or I missed this by that. So for all you younger race car drivers out there, and I'm talking younger, that, that's really young because, I mean, he's only 14. Uh, <laughs> but that is a great lesson learned. And, 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 again, if you're watching this, make sure that if there's anything you take away from this little interview, take that away. Race every race as hard as you can. Try to do the best that you can for every race because at the end of the year, the points all added up. And but still, I mean, if if you would have went into this year thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, you're going to get to drive for Augie Grill, you're going to be into 112, and oh by the way, Grant, you're going to finish second in the championship points. Would you have even believed that? 
you know, thinking about that, you know, going into the season, we weren't really too focused on points. We were just focused on getting seat time, getting some experience from Augie, you know, just the coaching and the experience part of it. But, you know, once we ran a couple races and five flags and had a really good – had a couple good finishes, and, you know, we were just scrolling through the points one day, and I saw it, I was at second. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, how? How is this possible? And, you know – Going into the championship race, I, I had that mindset, you know, let's, let's just try to get another top five finish, just, you know, keep the car in one piece. And then, you know, Chris Davidson ended up having some uh, issues with his radiator, and I was like, you know what, maybe this might be my chance to, to go for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I was watching that race on Speed 51, you know, the stream, and, and I was going nuts because, <clears throat> like you said, as soon as he had that radiator problem, um, I was like, okay, the door's open now. But you know what? Hey, young man, you did an amazing job. Um, congratulations to you for that. So, you know, the other thing that we, we haven't talked about yet is that you had a one-hour special on MAV TV that was, the whole thing was about Grant Thompson. Now, I don't know a lot of young race car drivers in the country that had that. I don't know a lot of old race car drivers in the country that have been able to do that. What was that like, you know, kind of absorbing that and saying, gosh, I had a one hour special that was just about me. That was crazy. You know, after we won the junior late mile challenge camp, um, you know, we knew we were going to be able to run the championship race in Madeira. And then a little bit later, we ended up getting told that we were going to have a one hour special on me. And I was like, I was like, what? This is crazy. And, you know, it was it was really cool. You know, looking back and watching it, you know, you really just see, like, a day in the life of me. Just going through the day, you know, leaving the hotel, going to the racetrack. Just, it was just really – it was really cool, you know, to have a cameraman right behind you filming everything you did. That was, that was, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> well, now, some of the cases, there was a cameraman in front of you. That is true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great it was a great program you did you did awesome on that and as you can see during this uniform or, or during this interview here this young man has a tremendous amount of talent off the track what a great spokesperson and again he's only 14 so um let's let's fast forward and let's talk about being on the bull ring now for all short track racers in the country which there are thousands and thousands of them Everybody wants their shot to get on the bull ring with Bob Dillner, and you had that opportunity. What was that like? Well, you know, Bob Dillner texted my dad one day and said, hey, we want to have Grant on the morning bull ring. And, you know, I, I thought about that for a second. I was like, this is crazy. You know, Bob Dillner, he's really big on Speed 51 with short track racing. And just to be on that show with all them really big interviewers just – you know, it was really cool. We had a really good interview. Um, we talked for a few minutes about, you know, everything we went through the season with. And just to talk to Bob Dillner about all that stuff was just really, really cool. Now, one thing that you may not have known is that after your interview, you were probably hustling off to school. But Bob Dillner made this <laughs> statement. He said, I think that Grant Thompson is the top young late model driver in the country. Dude, that's a pretty awesome statement. You know, uh, I didn't know he said that until the day after he said the day after we did the show. And you know, thinking about that, I was like, you know, how cool is it to, to hear Bob Dylan or say that about me? You know, I was super shocked about it, and I was like, wow, I, I've I really tried to make a name for myself this year, and just to hear him say that just you know boosted the confidence. <laughs> so I think you owe Bob a, a, a lunch or a dinner or at least a burger at the track or something. Yes, absolutely. I will do that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about a couple of big races coming up, but I want to bring something up that maybe not a lot of people know. And, um, you know, the one thing that I like about Grant Thompson is your dad has become a very, very good friend of mine. And he is he – is, so much orchestrated your career and put you in the right position with the right people around you. But I'm going to tell you what, I was out in Charlotte, North Carolina. I just left the meeting 
and the phone rang and it was your mom. <laughs> I didn't think that much about it at first. And, he, and she told me that your dad was working on your truck and the truck fell on him. And I got to tell you, my world kind of came to a stop right then and there. Tell us a little bit about that and, and what your feelings were going through that. You know, I was I was at school and I ended up, you know, getting called to the office and I got to the office and my mom said, He before before I tell you this, your dad's okay. And I said, What what happened? And she said, The race truck fell on. And I was like, like I was in shock. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is this is not good. And I got I got home and I just I thought about it, which we had practice at Pensacola that day and Kurt showed up to the house and was like, are you okay? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. And I got to talk to, I got to talk to dad a little bit after that. And just to hear his voice and just to hear that he was okay. That just, that really impacted me. I, I got real scared when I heard about that, but you know, he's, he's been recovering. Yeah. I, I know when you talk to him, cause I talked to him, not probably a little bit right after you, he was, he was okay, but he was a little loopy. <laughs> I think he had some major painkillers in him. But like you said, he's recovered. Um, he's still not back to 100%, but he's getting there. But, um, man, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that God was watching out for him that day. And, John, when you watch this, don't ever do that again. <laughs> People that are watching this, it only things can happen in a snap of a finger. And, and your whole life can change in front of you. So take the extra time. And always make sure that everything that you're doing is safely done. And, and if the truck needs to be blocked or, you know, don't crawl underneath. And he didn't crawl underneath the truck without jack stands and stuff. That's not what happened. But just make sure if you're watching this, remember this little story and always be safe. So let's fast forward about that or through that a little bit. And... Um, so a couple of weeks ago, you actually were a test driver at Chris Motorsports Park for the new Junior Late Model Spectacular Series. And uh, I, I could not have even imagined having anybody test that car to give us feedback because it, we know there's a lot of people that could have actually drove the car around the track and come in and go, yeah, it's cool. But the amount of feedback that you were able to give and again, he's only 14, um, is amazing. And, and I, I've heard you on, you know, uh, with TeamSpeak on, on the simulators and stuff like that. But walk us through what that was like to be able to get into that new junior late model and to know that you've had a big part in helping to create this new series. That was really cool. Um, I got invited to, to be the test driver for it. And, you know, when we first got to the track, I had the new – the new AR Revolution body on it, and that looked absolutely, it looked like a spaceship. It was so cool. And, you know, to be able to drive that car, to, to, to give them the feedback that they needed was, was really cool, really cool experience. And, you know, just, it was a little bit different from, you know, the Pro Light model, but it was like the Junior Light model I ran in California. And, you know, I kind of had to base it in between them. And, you know, car drove really good. We had a really good setup on it. And just to be able to, have that opportunity to be driving the, the test car for the Junior Lab Mall Spectacular Series. That was, that was really cool. Well, we appreciate everything that you did there. So um, let's talk about two big races that you've got coming up. First, we're going to talk about the turkey shoot at Tucson Speedway that is bringing in the top junior late model drivers in the country. And you're going to get a chance to race in that race for Nate Power Motorsports. How excited are you about that? I'm super excited about that. You know, after Madeira, after Madeira got canceled, we were able to, you know, know that we were going to be able to run a race with them this year. And, you know, I've seen a couple of pictures of the racetrack. It looks like a really fun racetrack. And I'm excited to be able to go out there with Nate Clark Motorsports to, uh, you know, they have some of the best slate models out on the West Coast. So to be able to go up there and to race with some of the best guys in the country just is just really incredible. And girls. And girls, and girls. Okay, all right, so big, big race coming up. I know, and that's 
Five Flag Speedway. I'm not going to steal any thunder. Tell us what's going to be going on during the snowball weekend and what all you're going to be involved with. I will be running the Pro Truck 50 and the Snowflake 100 at the Snowball Derby. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. That is right. I think if I if I can remember correctly, the, the Pro Truck race is on Thursday night, correct? That's right. Okay. So what's your mindset heading into that race? Um, you know, I'm super excited about it. We've had a whole bunch of experience at Five Flags, and, you know, we've had a couple wins there this season. And going in with Kurt Brook Motorsports, we're, we're just super excited. We're going to give it everything we have, and hopefully we come out on top of the year. Yeah, you know, the cool thing about that is somebody at your age, you're going to be down there because I was looking at the entry list for the snowball. Oh, my gosh, it's a who's who's list. And it's going to give you the opportunity to be able to race in front of them and really make an impact. No pressure on you. But then you're going to turn around and get back into the pro late model, into the 112, right? That's right. You're going to be able to run the snowflake. So give us your perspective on that. You know, we're ready. We're going to be testing a whole bunch before it to just, you know, just to find every setup that we can find for the long run after the short run. Um, you know, to be able to run in front of the, the guys that are on the super race, I mean, some of them are doing double duty. So to race with those guys, that's going to be awesome. You know, you have a bunch of cup guys I know that come down there. You have guys that are in the Xfinity and trucks that always come down there. You know, just, just to hear all the big names that I, that I know that are coming down there in the race with them or in front of them is just super incredible, especially with Aki Girl, too. <laughs> well, Grant, I can't wait for that week. I'm going to be down there with you. Um, I know you're going to do great. I want to thank you for spending some time with us. You've had an amazing 2020. And let's, let's top that off in 2021. If you are not following Grant Thompson, you need to do so. You need to go to Facebook and you need to follow Grant Thompson Racing. Go to his website, grantthompsonracing.com. Make sure you visit the Fan Zone. Again, make sure to like him on all of his social media platforms and sign up for his digital newsletter. That way you really get to stay in, connect, in contact with him. You can you know, get his uh, podcast that he does with Tom Baker uh, every month of Driving Five. So Grant, again, thanks for being with us. Good luck on the next two up and coming races. And we're going to look forward to some exciting things in 2021. Is there anybody you'd like to thank at this time? I'd like to thank Augie Grill with uh, Gark Motorsports, Kerberit Motorsports, PFC Brakes, AR Bodies, WCI Parts, Roger and Bobby Roos, Serendipity, KRC Power Steering, and I think that's about it. All right. If you're a sponsor out there and you're looking for a young race car driver to hook up to, did you just listen to this interview? This kid is awesome off the track. So, again, thank you to everybody for watching this Race Face Spotlight. Again, go out this weekend, support local racing in your communities. There's not a lot of racing left, but you can still go out there and support it. Again, thanks for watching. My name is Rod Wortham, and we'll see you very soon on the next Race Face Spotlight.